Uh, sorry, uh, going back to uh, uh, the, the the pastor. Pastor, please shotgun through Romans 13, what it really says versus the other uh, passages and stories in the Bible. Well, yeah, right, Alex. Thanks a lot. And, and uh, yeah, you you mentioned right before the break. Let, let's talk about some of the examples in the Bible of those who resisted unlawful authority. I, and let's think about Daniel, one of the great uh, stories of the Scripture. Uh, every Sunday school boy and girl hears about Daniel in the lion's den. Well, uh, you, you know, how did he get to the lion's den? He got there because his civil authority government put him there. Well, why did they put him there? Because he resisted what they told him to do. He said no. In that particular case, they said you can't pray for X amount of days. Uh, publicly and uh, he, you know, and, I mean, even privately, and he said, "No, I'm not going to do that. I'm, you know, I'll open my windows. I'm going to pray like I do every day." They threw him in the lion's den. Of course, God protected him and, and saved him from the lion's den. But that's not the point. The point really wasn't that God saved him from the lions. The point was he was willing to go into the lion's den in defiance of his civil authority. The same book you got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who was commanded to bow down and worship the image of the state. Uh, they said, we can't do that. We'll have no other gods before us, the very first commandment. We're not going to bow to the state. The state is not our god. So they threw him in the burning, fiery furnace. And again, we talk about in, in Sunday school that God delivered them from the burning, fiery furnace. But again, that's not the point. The point is they went into the burning, fiery furnace. Why did they go in? Because they defied government. They were not willing to submit their conscience to the authority of the state. And this was the old terror of government. We're going to throw you in with starving lions if you don't do what we say. We're going to throw you into a smelting pit if you don't do what we say. I mean, the same garbage today. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, even the, the the book of Judges. I mean, people read the book of Judges, whether it's Gideon or, or Samson or, or, or Jephthah or whoever it is. Read the entire book of Judges. What do we find? We find the people of God being tyrannized, being uh, subject, subjugated by some oppressive regime, and God raising up a deliverer uh, called a judge. Sometimes they were just a, a, a common person that had no uh, you know, particular position or, or authority, but God put it on their heart to deliver their people from that tyranny that they were under. And so they rose up, God helped them, God gave them strength, and they delivered the people from this oppressive uh, regime, whatever it might happen to be. That's the entire book of Judges. Uh, you, you get to the New Testament, you come to Simon Peter, uh, when the... Uh, the, the civil government over him said, we command you not to speak and preach anymore in his name. And he said, sorry, you know, we must obey God rather than man. And they took the, the cat of nine tails on the back for that, uh, went to prison for that. But they said no. They defied civil authority. The entire Bible. Same thing with Paul. Uh, fast Same forward Paul. Uh, you know, past f f uh, 70 years later. A uh, hundred years later, being burned at the stake in the arena, being thrown to lions because they wouldn't. Well, it's the entire Bible. And, and that shows you just how deceived or openly wicked most of these little devils are up there on the pulpits. I mean, these are little demons. Well, a lot of them have, have been, uh, they have been deceived. They, they, they've been taught it in, in seminary or Bible college. Uh, it's the accepted uh, doctrine to teach. They haven't thought it through. Yes, yeah, some of them. Some of them are demons. They are, but some of them are just deceived. They just don't know any better. That's what they were taught, and they haven't studied it through for themselves. And that's why Tim and I wrote the book. Tim again is my constitutional attorney son, and we collaborated on this. But by the way, can I get my website so people can get a hold? Oh, absolutely. Of that? In fact, I was about to get to that. Go yeah, ahead. it's it's uh, you can't get it in bookstores. It's uh, chuckbaldwinlive dot com. That's chuckbaldwinlive all one word l i v e dot com, and it's very easy. You can see the links and you can click on it, order online, etc. But uh, that's why we wrote this book is because of this indoctrination that's going on out there. And that, in conjunction with the 501c3 uh, corporation status of churches, has completely neutered the pulpits. That's why they won't take a stand. And these people that are listening out there, and all denominations of people are, are listening right now. And you go to church on Sunday, and you come back, and you say to Alex on the phone, or you say to your friends, you know, why doesn't my preacher take a stand? Why won't he talk about this? Why doesn't he get involved in this? And this is why. 
This is why. The 501c3 tax-exempt status, by the way, our Liberty Fellowship here in, in Montana, is not a 501c3 uh, fellowship. By the way, it didn't exist until the 50s. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the freedom of the press, on and on on. First Amendment, they said, oh, you can still be a church that's tax-exempt outside of law because we can't put a law on you. We have no jurisdiction, back to what you were talking about earlier. Or you can be a charitable organization. And the big denominations ordered all their churches to file under it. And now the charitable organization has no free speech when it doesn't get any clearer than the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the press or the people uh, to peaceably assemble. I mean, it just goes on and on. Read the First Amendment. It's all right there. And now I've had friends come to me from their Baptist churches, their Catholic churches, uh, their uh, you, know, you name it. I, I, Mormons have sent me the letters where uh, just across the board, uh, they are told, do not even talk about politics or your views, even at church or at any church function. I mean, they're even telling now their flocks don't have free speech. I mean, these are like Soviet cults. Yeah, the, the fear of losing their tax-exempt status is what's causing that. And Romans chapter 13, in the erroneous interpretation of that passage, is giving them the spiritual justification for it. That's, that's the double tandem that is uh, destroying America. If we could get the churches and the preachers to stand up for the biblical principles of liberty, the same kind of principles that Jonas Clark, uh, he was the pastor of the church at Lexington, on April 19, 1775, when the British troops came marching through to do two things. They were going to arrest John Adams, uh, excuse me, Sam Adams and John Hancock, and they were going to, to seize the cache of firearms that was stored at Concord. And when they got to Lexington, it was Pastor Jonas Clark and the congregants, the male congregants of his church, that were the Minutemen that fired the shot heard around the world, and the war for independence began in the United States. And, it was, it, and that was the kind of spirit that the black regiment preachers all uh, personified back at that time. They all understood this. I mean, if we had this erroneous, fallacious interpretation of Romans 13 in the colonies, like we have today in America, we would still be a crown colony of Great Britain. Well, that's why the social engineers 100 years ago first thing targeted the takeover of the churches and the teaching of Romans 13. I mean, they knew they had to get rid of real Christianity in this country, and they've replaced it with all these gold, little shiny uh, glitter bug uh, people in you know fancy outfits with pink wigs on, acting like clowns on purpose. I mean, that is all by design, ladies and gentlemen. It was the Christians that kicked King George back to England. We'll be right back with Chuck Baldwin. Your call. Stay with us. Arizona town declares state of emergency. Police chief takes power. <laughs> Police chief, you're fired, Mayor. Everybody's like, oh, we bowed out to you, Supreme Leader. Uh, Chuck Baldwin uh, is our guest. Look, humans haven't changed. We, we act the same. And if you lay down to tyranny, it is going to run over you. To the point of, in most cases, just starts killing everybody because they're like, well, no one's resisting us. Well, then kill them. I must continue to dominate. It's just, it's, it's wicked. Jenny in Florida, you're on the air with Pastor Chuck Baldwin. Go ahead. Thanks for holding. Then Ryan, Earl, Kathy, Chris, and others. Go ahead, Jenny. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Good. Welcome. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for everything that you do or you've done. Thank you. But... Uh, my feel is everything is go everybody is going to the bad way. Everybody wanna fix a problem that we have today. We have to fix a problem we have in the past first, and it's so much easier. And believe me, we have a very deep secret in the past. Could you follow me? <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. We have a deep secret in the past. Well, we're we're talking about how our churches have been turned into basically government arms. Uh, do you have a question or comment for Chuck Baldwin, or what's the secret? No, a secret. I, you believe or not, it may be so strange, but I decoded Leonardo da Vinci. I decoded a whole thing. Well, listen, send me that information. That's very interesting. 
Uh, send me that information at showtips at infowars.com. Thank you. I know there's supposedly a lot of stuff encoded in there, and that's a big field out there. Ryan in Texas, you're on there with Chuck Baldwin. we got to move quick. Go ahead, Ryan. All right, I just got a 20-second comment I want to make. Um, when you look on the drugs report, they say that we're the criminals and terrorists. Well, the real criminals and terrorists are the puppets that are in the office that are voting for these unconstitutional bills. If you voted for the Patriot Act and or its renewal, criminal. The Super Congress, criminal. Banks, criminals. And see, if I steal from my company, I get fired. If you steal from the country, and they're retiring. You know, there's cameras on every corner acting like I'm a criminal while they're live on camera being criminals. I don't want to wait till next November uh, for a change. We need to arrest these criminals now. We know the tireless minority, and I don't want to just impeach the president. We need to impeach all these criminals. They want a super Congress. I want a super impeachment. Very well said. Thank you for the call, uh, Ryan. Uh, that's a good question for you, Chuck. I'm sure you've seen Harry Reid call the Tea Partiers terrorist. Uh, the New York Times says that anybody who does, wants to get rid of the Federal Reserve is, quote, Hezbollah. They're rebranding and saying we're not worried about al-Qaeda now. And I told folks this was coming. It's, it's particularly white males and Christians. Uh, and we've got all these White House memos about how great a terror attack would be uh, to help them. We have Joe Biden saying the Tea Party are terrorists. Uh, it, they're really trial ballooning, coming after people that understand that they are the criminals. Yeah, well, I got a little taste of that in 2008, Alex, whenever the MIAC report came out in the state of Missouri and identified myself and Ron Paul and Bob Barr by name. And, of course, you were you were on top of all that. We, we You talked, you broke the story on that one. And uh, that thing became a, a major debacle, uh, an embarrassment for the law enforcement officials in the state of Missouri that later rescinded the report and dismissed the man that initiated it. But the damage was done. And ever since then, that has been continuing. It did that the Department of Homeland Security, through their fusion centers, continues to put out this kind of uh, disinformation. Well, I was about to say, my act was just a regurgitated ADL federal report. That's exactly right, SPLC. And they continue. Uh, these reports continue. I, I promise you, everywhere you go to speak, everywhere I go to speak, uh, and there is a report that appears in the computers of the local and county law enforcement officers alerting them to the fact that that we are there identifying us as extremists, et cetera. And I'm, I'm not just saying that by hearsay. I actually saw a police computer report one time when I invited Dr. Greg Dixon to come and speak to my church, a great man of God, the former pastor of Indianapolis Baptist Temple in Indianapolis, Indiana, that was seized by the IRS, the only church in America to, to do so. And uh, whenever he came to speak, uh, Deputy Sheriff let me see the uh, computer in his car, alerting him to Dr. Dixon's presence in my church. Now, that came from DHS through the Fusion Center into the local and county law Oh, enforcement. yeah, that's who they're watching when they get the Christmas Day underwear bomber. The government admits they got him on the plane, all staged, and we're all the locky hanging out secretly at the Pentagon, Fox News. But I got sent a secret report from the Army that at my events for In the Fed and Ron Paul's, they have Army there. And it says, don't let them know your army. They'll try to kill you. I mean, they're telling the military we, that if you come to an in-the-fed rally and they, we find out they're military, we're going to kill them, Pastor, like we're like we're vampires or something. Yeah, that's what it's come to. And again, my Romans 13 book is at Chuck Baldwin. But hold on, stay there. Let's play it on the other side, do a few more minutes, and take a few more calls. Absolutely, folks. That's why we've got him here today. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you his website on the other uh, side if you want to get it and get it out to your pastor. And if your pastor reads it and still keeps going forward, get out of that church.